to another Antique Sunday. Today we're going to talk about Melliston House and the needlework collection within this absolutely beautiful 18th century Scottish country mansion. I first visited Melliston House when my then husband was playing cricket for the Borderers cricket team um, and I used to arrive at these cricket matches with a huge picnic basket two perfectly clean children and then disappear off to look at a stately home or go and swim in a lake or climb some battlements and look at the Roman wall and really enjoy the culture of the, the northern side of the Scottish border, which uh, we live just south of the Scottish border. But the culture of the borders really doesn't begin and end on the Scottish border. There's a sort of swathe of wonderful country mansions and castles because, of course, the English were defending from the Scots and the Scots were defending from the English and um, the sort of money of Scotland tends to be in a very large belt of many, many beautiful buildings. So there are many mansions and beautiful country houses when wealth came to Scotland with the Industrial Revolution, but this is before then. And this is the area between Glasgow on the left, um, Edinburgh to the east, and then between there, going towards the uh, English border, and there's a lovely rich area of countryside, um, quite low land mostly. When you're at Melliston House, you can look and see the Cheviot Hills, which are in the Northumberland, where I'm from, and you can see these beautiful hills, and in the winter they're capped with white snow and then the rich farmland between Melliston House and these very big hills in the south end of Scotland are just absolutely gorgeous and really rich and well planted with massive trees and studded throughout with these lovely country estates and uh, with a lot of wealth actually. So we would arrive at a cricket match at about 9.30. My husband would um, declare whether he was going to be uh, batting or fielding and if he was batting first we'd disappear off pretty prompt and uh, we'd go off and find an adventure. And many of these adventures involved beautiful country houses and castles and sometimes these cricket matches were actually in the grounds of the castles because they were private cricket fields. So the, this sort of southern end of Scotland um, actually play quite a lot of cricket whereas when you go further north in Scotland they don't so um, my research when my children were little very much involved <laughs> um, timing my visits to castles around the um, the unpredictable timing of whether or not he was batting or, or fielding and um, whether or not uh, there was a castle nearby or a lake to swim in or a river or an adventure to be had. The fabulous thing about Mellison House is it's just sheer beauty and it's setting in the countryside. It's, it's a real, it's a really, really lovely place to visit. And as you come down the drive over a cattle bridge, you see deer in the park and the fantastic trees, huge trees, cedar trees. And um, there's a little Wendy house, rather like the Queen had for when she was a child at Sandringham. There's um, a lovely little thatched cottage where you know you could imagine a witch lived in and of course my children were terrified of it but but it is worth schlepping up the hill and having a look at it if you ever visit Mellison House. Anyway in 2020 it's actually closed of course because of Covid but uh, tomorrow would have been on Monday the last day of the season. It's quite a short season at Mellison House and you've really got to watch it when you're visiting these houses because they all open on different days. It's not a set thing that they're open on a Saturday or a Sunday and closed on a Monday which is quite usual but they might have different opening days. So if you're in the area you could be at Traquair House which is you know half an hour down the road um, looking at a very ancient hunting lodge, a royal hunting lodge and their fantastic 16th and 17th century collection and then the next day, and I wouldn't do it in all in one day, it's too much. The next day you could be at Melliston House looking at their wonderful 18th century, mostly 18th century collection, although there are some 16th century woven tapestries. So if you're interested in surface embroidery, actually looking at the uh, very mostly Catholic um, Maxwell Stewart family in Traquair House one day, and then seeing the Protestant house of Melliston 
in a different in a different way and and it's really very interesting to see how the aristocrats in the same area lived and um and prospered there is wonderful needlework all over Mellison House. Um, they have a lot of beautiful uh, French-inspired needlepoint. Um, the furnishings are sumptuous. It's kept in beautiful order. It's a really well-maintained um, house, absolutely wonderful house, well-run in all ways. A lovely cafe, of course. <laughs> they will have a lovely cafe and amazing gardens looking down over a lake that was, of course, installed during the time of the house build. When you enter Mellison House as a um, paid visitor, you go in through the side, but as a guest in the 18th and 19th and even early 20th century, as a private guest, you'd go up the steps into the hallway where you see a set of needlepoint chairs and the grand piano, and it's absolutely gorgeous uh, reception and the acoustics are wonderful and I've actually lectured in there and I can tell you, you don't need a microphone and they're so cleverly built these houses for comfort and for um, showing off as you go in so they're very often up steps or up a hill to show off their size and grandeur but when I visited and I have visited Nelson often I usually leg it up those stairs the <laughs> beautiful ornate stairs past the 16th century um, woven tapestries and I go into the machinil room as my priority because in that room was the most wonderful four poster bed with an exquisite set of cruel work four poster bed hangings. And I actually chose that design to actually replicate and display as part of an exhibition which travelled in um, 2010 and uh, before that in 20. 2003 I think it was in castles and country houses and then in London, Harrogate and Dublin. The bed hangings are really clever because they actually have um, a stitched uh, lattice work background so it looks like laden couchwork but it's actually cruel stem stitch and then little dashes of satin stitches rather randomly worked in between and then the design is a parallelogram repeat um, of uh, the background is deep, rich chocolate. And then the leaves are, um, they're, they're Bayer stitch and laden couch work in various blues. And the pink flowers, and they're all pink, are long and short stitch with chocolate French knots in the middle. But I suppose the main point of interest for those of you who have been following our kits and stitching them for a while, or have done just this design or in the middle of it is the Mellison fire screen, which is um, a turn of the century design and it's the asymmetric design. So it's almost matching left and right and has two facing parrots. So uh, I have this design on a parrot cushion and on this fire screen. And the only real alteration I made in the design was that the deer looked a little bit Disney-fied to me. And although it's very cute on the original, it's not as traditional looking um, for me. So I did change, I put my hand up, I did change the deer to look more like the deer in the deer park outside. Another room of great interest to the embroiderer is the Great Gallery, where you climb up the stairs and it gets rather... Um, rather lonely up there, rather creaky floorboards. And uh, I, had a, I had a very interesting experience, shall I say, when I was alone in the um, vestibule outside the Great Gallery when I really felt a very strong presence. And um, I'm not normally <laughs> very prone to feeling this, but I did not really want to be on my own in that room. And it was very interesting. This gallery is a huge room of over 60 feet in length and it's got a it's got a curved ceiling. So it's a curved ceiling rather sort of like, like being inside a barrel. And um, they've got iconic columns at either end and this fantastic Adam decoration um, of thin plaster. Absolutely beautiful, very typical of the 18th century. And of course, on cold days um, or raining or just 
if you if you'd like to parade your beautiful dresses with your guests you would actually walk in these galleries so many of these big houses have long galleries for exercise and for interest and for showing off your treasures so they've got period tables and display cabinets of the time and open in these display cabinets they have many treasures and a lot of them are of needlework One little gem is the beautiful sampler worked by Grizzle Bailey and her sister Rachel and May Menzies, their governess. Um, the source of their pictures was the animal book um, and that belonged to May Menzies' mother in the mid-17th century. So many of you will be familiar with this book. The book is on display with the sampler and I have never seen that anywhere else and you can see where the sampler absolutely copies uh, they call it a sample it's a needlepoint piece uh, with with putty point and grow point on the piece and of course in the middle is the uh, a lady sitting there and she's one of the four senses and of course she's smell and she even has some um, smell hounds on the bottom right of her little uh, vignette in the middle but the way that the um, animals are described on here you can actually see the rhinoceros and I've seen a very similar rhinoceros in cruel work worked about the same time in Glam's castle the same time as the original book in the 17th century that is but the lack of proportion as you can see on the piece the flowers are much bigger than the uh, swan for example the horse is smaller than the kingfisher and the rose and the honeysuckle and you can see that um, the the designs are just pricked and pounced straight onto the background fabric so there's no scaling up or down. When I visited mostly in the 1980s and 90s and um, a little in the early 21st century the count, then Countess of Haddington, she is still the Countess of Haddington because I don't think that the current Earl is married, um, he, she was very welcoming and really wonderful and I'm often struck by the owners of these castles, how very welcoming they are if you have a particular interest. If you're bored by history and the design and the artefacts, well, you're not going to really appreciate a visit. But if you go and you're really fascinated by children's toys or, you know, just have a particular type of interest and get chatting to the guides, you know, they might call the owner and say, oh, I, I didn't realise we, we'd like to write this down and your opinion matters. And every visitor is valued by these houses. And it's not just for your money, it's for your intellectual input as well. So when I was actually replicating the um, the bed hangings with uh, a group of, eventually a group of volunteers, we went downstairs into the cellars and uh, I think where the old kitchens and wine cellars had been painted white and they were very beautiful and a really lovely light to stitch by at the back of the house. So there was a sort of grey neutral light which was wonderful for colour matching. So my volunteers and I um, began stitching down there. We made samples of each of the areas and those became touching pieces which eventually were stolen at the exhibition. They half disappear. It was rather disappointing. Um, but um, as we progressed with the piece, we were invited upstairs. And I remember a lovely, lovely, lovely day in front of a log fire, a huge crackling log fire, being fed coffee and biscuits. And <laughs> we had our little packed lunch um, and some chocolate cake arrived in the afternoon. Oh, gosh, I remember that. And um, the Countess of Haddington was just so encouraging and lovely. With And I stitched, sat and stitched with two ladies and I never wanted to go home.